Hi, my name is Balisa Madumo, convener of the PRISM Awards, Africa's most sought after public relations award. I am also your host for a very special 10 part series called Byline, brought to you by the PRISM Awards and the Public Relations Institute of Southern Africa, better known as PRISA. Throughout this 10 part series, I'll be chatting to industry thought leaders and discussing great campaigns, important insights, and quite honestly, what is and isn't working about our industry. Follow at the PRISM Awards on Twitter. Send us your questions and comments. You can also tag me and my guest. My guest today has over 20 years industry experience. She is the founder and CEO of a black-owned, female-owned, full-service agency, The Riverbed. So, Mona Lisa, how does it feel to have created the best campaign, according to your colleagues in the industry, in 2019? It was an amazing experience for us and um, you know I think as an agency we are very um, big about creating what we call whole ideas and um, the campaign of the year award was a demonstration I think and testimony to the fact that um, our process in terms of creating whole ideas really delivers on the right kind of results. Mm. Um, the work was really um, built from collaboration. We are a creative agency but one that is really diverse in terms of having dis different disciplines that all come together to create the kind of work that has won us some really great awards. Mm, absolutely, and mm. congratulations Thank on that. You. I think Thank that's you. absolutely fabulous. Dream come true for us. Right. <laughs> we, we were very excited about it. And well deserved. Thank you. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about the campaign sure. itself. It was for aware.org, yes. um, and it was specifically addressing a huge um, epidemic in South Africa, mm. which is underage uh, drinking. True. Um, I think it was executed so well, but a few months later, we've had lockdown, we've had bans on the, in, uh, on the industry mm. as a whole. How has that affected the work that you do with your, with your current client? Um, le let me start by maybe chatting a bit around the underage drinking yes. and, you know, award, just, just as a starting point. I, I think for us what was really interesting um, in terms of doing this kind of work, firstly, we, we love um, work that has a societal impact and, mm. and really um, delivers on a need uh, within mm. society. Uh, secondly, it was an interesting campaign for us in that um, I think a lot of us accept underage drinking as, as parents or as caregivers. We don't see anything wrong with giving our children alcohol, especially when they reach 17 or about to turn 18. And, and we never really consider that as illegal, which it is. And so in, in, in really coming up with the idea around the campaign, it, it, it took a lot of research, insights, a lot of debates and collaboration around really how to attack the problem. Should we be talking directly to teenagers at high school and telling them not to drink was the one uh, direction that mm. we could have looked at. Um, or secondly, you know, should we have uh, really looked at the source, which, which was the approach we took to look at adults and to look at um, how they actually influence underage drinking and uh, you know in doing that we, we came up with obviously a campaign that's really done well not only at the prisons but you know it, it's received other accolades as well and um, we were able to really obviously talk to consumers but over and above that what was great about the campaign is that it really also started opening doors from a government perspective and created an opportunity for aware.org to get a seat at the table um, with, the, the, with the Department of Social Development. So that for us was, was really great. And speaking of uh, the relationship with government, we've had um, several lockdowns since last year and when you, when you won the award and the, the mm. work actually kicked off. Right. How has, um, and as well as the ban of booze, mm. how has that affected um, the way you work with your client today? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm reminded of when we won the award. It was during lockdown. <laughs> and I think even from a PRISM Award perspective, you had to make a lot of changes mm -hmm. happen because we, be, could, we couldn't have a live event anymore. And we were obviously also um, under the same situation. I think it was um, exacerbated by the fact that alcohol was banned. And we, we really had to become proactive in terms of our ideation and, and, and how to make responsible drinking relevant during prohibition, right? And, and, and that was the challenge that was put upon us. Um, you'll recall, obviously, the ban happened in March. And quite interestingly, we were in the throes of um, launching a festive season don't drink and drive campaign during that time. And obviously, uh, you know, the, the ban happened, lockdown happened, and we needed to then look at how we start having conversations with consumers during lockdown 
around responsible drinking, around the choices that they'd be making during lockdown, and ensuring that even in that context, they were being responsible um, you know, around drinking. So it, it was challenging, but I think in challenging times, sometimes your best work is brought to light. And so we took that opportunity with both hands. Mm, absolutely. Mm, mm. And speaking of which, how important do you think it is for agencies to have at least um, a large percentage of work that's dedicated to societal issues, you know, particularly in the country they operate in? I think it's it's really important. I mean, there's there's obviously this balance between um, you know profit and um, purpose, which is a debate that continues to rage on. Um, but more and more, I think brands realize the importance of purpose. I think they realize that purpose cannot just be a statement on their financial results or, or something sitting on a website. Purpose has to be demonstrated, and we need to see it in action. And, and so I think in that context, at least from a riverbed perspective, we realize that there's really great opportunities in unleashing purpose uh, for brands, but also doing it within the NPO space, which is you know, a territory that's, that, that we truly love to work on. Our, our ethos um, you know, and, and, and philosophy as an agency is around care. We, we, we see a lot of power in that word and, and the power of actually trying to make consumers, business, brands care um, is really where a lot of our, um, the power of our ideation process sits. And um, in so doing, it becomes important that we deliver on positive change in terms of the work that we do. And you know, that positive change isn't necessarily always um, you know, doesn't always necessarily have to exist in a, in a CSI space, but change can, can really um, take different forms. And uh, what we want to focus on is ensuring that it delivers both on what the brand purpose is, what business is trying to achieve, and obviously what the consumer needs. Mm. And, and that's really how we yeah. approach it. I feel like what you said about purpose is so important. Mm. Um, and in fact, it's, it sounds like a golden thread in the way you approach business. and even, I'm assuming, your, your agency. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about purposeful transformation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we don't need to beat about around the bush in terms of the fact that our industry has not transformed yet and is taking quite a while. It's yeah. quite slow. Yeah. So how do you, um, you know, ensure that we can either you know, speed up transformation but do it well with purpose? It's a very important question. Um, you know, I, just in, in terms of uh, preparing for this interview, I, I, I'm always quite reflective in terms of where we are and, and obviously as an industry, where we're trying to, to go. And um, some research has been done in terms of has progress been made? And, and I think the answer is yes, progress has been made. And the bigger question becomes, is it is it happening and taking place in the right areas, right? So do we have enough black decision makers? Do we have enough black female decision makers? Um, do we have enough black female owners or black male owners within the industry? And that, that's really where a lot of the work you know, has to be done. And um, to your point, it has to be intentional. It, it has to be purposeful. Um, and, and there's definitely a lot of work to be done in that, in, in that regard. I'm, I'm fortunate in that I, I sit on the board of the ACA. And the portfolio, um, there is a portfolio around transformation, and I'm the vice chair of that, um, you know, that portfolio. And uh, part of the work that does have to be done in terms of addressing um, transformation, firstly, is just around the research. I, I think as an industry, we don't really have enough data to really support mm -hmm. uh, what we know anecdotally. We, we know transformation has to happen. But when we look at the numbers, we're, 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 we're not really sure where that needs to take place. So research is really one of the key things we want to work on so that we can start to measure, have benchmarks in place around where we are now and where we're trying to get to, what areas of transformation do we need to look at. Because transformation is in itself is, 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 is quite a big word. There's so many different areas of transformation that we need to focus on. And um, we need to be quite intentional about what to prioritize, where change is really needed, and how we obviously make that happen. I, I think what you said about research is extremely important mm. because at the end of the day, you need a benchmark and you need a goal. Right. Um, right. And you, we, we c it can't be sort of just based on anecdotes, as you mm. say. Um, but I wanted to ask you, and coming a little bit more personal, okay. you know, do, how do you feel as a black woman in this industry 
owning and running a fully serviced, you know, um, agency. Mm. Do you do you feel any difference in the time that you've been running at the riverbed in terms of how black women are accepted um, in this industry? It's it's been a journey, <laughs> Balisa. If I tell you um, when I started this agency, and that was it's going on 14 years ago now. So try and think back to 2006, 2007 very different um, situation and um, fewer black leaders just generally black um, you know women men or women and and so part, part of part of any leader's journey is to have people that they can look up to right and and when you're not seeing enough people like you and me um, the journey becomes a lot more difficult and, and transformation becomes a lot more difficult and so the challenges were were huge not insurmountable because i woke up every day believing it was possible to get to, you know to where we are now as an agency um, and and it, it, it was really difficult firstly access um, you know to um, having doors opened was was very challenging I think just being given a seat at the table was was another challenge access to capital but also access to the right kind of resources you know to be able to convince um, best of breed people to become part of Riverbed 10 years ago was a very impossible task. Um, and so you, you, you having to, to battle with being a black female-owned agency, knowing that to grow you need to bring in the right people, struggling to bring in the right people because they, it's very difficult to articulate a vision that they can't see. Um, and, and year on year, you know, that, that really was the struggle. I must say um, over the last few years the, the change has been more more drastic. I think that you know the change has happened a lot quicker in the last few years and we're in a place now where there are a lot more black owned agencies, there are a lot more black um, leaders, both female and, and male and, and that's really helping to open doors. I, I think business has played an important role in making that happen. A lot of um, the work that we get, there are demands on um, business and agencies to really ensure that they're bringing to the fore diverse agencies to actually mm. deliver on mm. their work. Mm. And so it, it, it's, um, you know, when, when, when racism and, um, and things like that are systemic within a, you know, with, within business, it, it becomes important that all the entire ecosystem is working towards delivering on change and, and we're seeing a lot more of that right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there is some progress. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk a little bit about um, independent agencies. Yes. Do you think that it's tougher for independent agencies in South Africa um, to make it and to position themselves, like you say, just the ability to attract top talent? Do you think it's, it's harder for independent agencies in South Africa? Yes, I, I've definitely experienced that. Um, over the years, like I said, it, it, it has been very challenging. I, I think more and more, especially within the COVID context we find ourselves in, I, I believe independent agencies have a compelling proposition to take to customers. Um, you know, we're a lot more agile in terms of our approach. Um, a lot of decisions are made locally. We, we're not um, needing to deal with multinationals and um, ownership overseas. We can make decisions really quickly on the ground. I think, it, it, at least from a riverbed perspective, we've been able to be a lot more agile, uh, diversify in terms of what clients' needs are, and really respond in ways that perhaps bigger multinationals might have struggled to do. Mm. So I think right now there's definitely um, it, you know, there's definitely value in being an independent agency. Um, the, the, the journey has been, been a difficult one, like I said, but the world is changing and, and I think um, independents have this ability to differentiate. I think they have the ability to be challenger brands, to think differently and to be more passionate and excited about making change happen. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we have um, in our stead. And you and I are quite active on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have my moments yes. where I disappear yes. for a while. But yeah, um, likewise. The, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think my, my question really has to do with um, the agencies that are popping up sort mm -hmm. of every um, week sometimes, yep. mm -hmm. um, brand new, yep. led by people who are probably not as experienced as, you know, people who've had more years experience in the right. industry 
what are your your thoughts um, with regards to the the regulation sort of of our industry? Do you think that um, it's a good thing that smaller agencies are popping up all the time, or do you think that our industry needs to be a little bit more regulated in terms of controlling who's able to do work um, and call themselves, you know, a PR agency <laughs> or an advertising agency? Right, right. It's it's a really interesting question. I mean, for me, I think what um, you know, what social media does is it brings to the fore things that possibly were happening anyway. You know, mm -hmm. if, I, if I look back at who I was 13 years ago, I was also probably a pop-up agency <laughs> that made this decision to, to start Riverbed. And, and 13 years later, I'm speaking with Balisa on this amazing platform and having a very different conversation, right? And, and so what, what, what they have to their advantage is technology. They've got the technology to be able to create um, a proposition and position themselves as, as an agency that's been around for a while. That you, for me, the, the, the truth is that we are not, um, the, the industry we're in is about people, and, and people come with a set of expertise, and, and that set of expertise can be framed within an agency. You can call yourself an agency or an expert or a consultant, um, but I, I do believe they need to be given the platform to rise. Um, I do believe we need, um, personally, I believe the competition is a good thing. And I believe, um, you know, smaller independent or, or one man owned, one woman owned, dare I say, Matt, <laughs> <laughs> organizations bring, you know, something, they bring a different energy, they um, audacious in, in, in terms of what they believe is possible. And those things become really important in terms of keeping the agent, you know, the, at least the, the industry on its feet. We, we, we can't, um, you know, continue to be, um, yeah, led by sort of the, the, these multinationals who we end up with work really circulating amongst a few. And, and we do definitely need to open up um, the industry a lot more, I believe that. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. Um, and so let's wrap up with your version of the good, the bad, and the ugly <laughs> of our industry. Gosh, <laughs> um, I'll uh, I'll start with the good, um, and and I believe there is a lot of that, um, and, and obviously it, it 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 sits very much for me in, in in the fact that there has been a lot of work done from a transformation perspective. Um, I I think it sits in in the fact that. You know, agencies like Riverbed have been able to make the kind of progress that we have made. Um, I think it sits in the fact that what I'm proud of is that all, not only are we a black female-owned agency, we are a female-managed agency. Um, I have a, a female ECD, the head of PR, Fantastic. head of client service, and we, we literally are the people leading and, and growing this business and, and taking it to where it needs to go. I think what's good about this um, space is, is, is that it, it is the new voices that are coming to the fore, um, you know, with their own view of the world, their own view of marketing, um, their own view of campaigns, and, and doing that really deliberately and, and um, really allowing, I think, a very um, authentic South African narrative to start coming to the fore. And I think that's really good. Um, I think what's also good about the industry is that the demand side, our corporates are understanding that um, BE is really important. I think more importantly, they're understanding that diversity is key to their bottom line. You know, that it's no longer about ticking the scorecard, but it is understanding that if I work with a diverse agency, it's, it's, it's going to benefit me, it's mm. going to benefit my customers. And so that, for me, is really good. It, it, it's, it's taken too long <laughs> for us to get to this point. Um, but, but that's really great. I, I, I also believe they've been, and maybe not specific to the industry, but there have been a lot of interesting firsts that have come out of 2020. You know, we, we, we sit in a world where we have um, Kamala Harris as the first vice president of, of, of the supposedly free world. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that, that, that says a lot about where the world is going. And, and, and I have no doubt that things like that that happen globally have an impact on South Africa and the way um, business is going to view us as agencies and the work that we do. So you know, I think there's, there's really a, a, a lot of good that's come out of that. I'm an eternal optimist by nature. So when you ask me about the bad um, or the ugly, I, 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 you know, I, I might struggle somewhat. Let's wrap it up <laughs> into, into, into one. So the bad and the ugly. And I think yeah. 
what's important is sort of uh, critical um, conversations, not, not so much mm -hmm. just criticizing. Absolutely. So let's let's look at where there are opportunities to, mm -hmm. to make things better. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's maybe put it in one bad and <laughs> <laughs> True. Look, I mean, this, despite how far we've come, there's still a lot to be done, mm -hmm. right? And um, there, there, there are still situations where we, we walk into boardrooms that are not transformed or meetings where transformation is not taking place. And, and, and so there's still a lot of work to be done in that regard. Um, we were both talking about the fact that it has been slow and albeit it's sped up. There's definitely a lot of work to be done in that regard. I think th there's obviously a lot of work to be done, at least for me, in terms of this, you know, the society and the, so the societal ills that we face every day. Um, and, and how, as um, agencies, how we can start to really try and do great things for good. Um, you know, gender-based violence is rife, um, crime, abuse, th there's so many of these, poverty, and I believe in the power of creativity to make change happen. And, and, and so if I look at the bad and the ugly, for me it's about how, how, how do we look at the society in which we live and exist, and try and make change happen by, by really coming up with creative work that begins to solve our societal mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, doing great things for good. For good. I think that's Absolutely. an awesome note to wrap up on. Thank you so much, uh, Mona Lisa. Thank you. For joining us today and for having such a thoughtful and insightful conversation with Thank us. Thank you, loved the opportunity. Thank you for having me. <laughs> that's it for this episode of Byline, Mona Lisa Zwambela. Follow the rest of the series right here and don't forget to comment, share and like. Michelle Obama once said, the difference between a broken community and a thriving one is the presence of women who are respected. Goodbye. <laughs>